Hi beauties, welcome back to day two of Hollow Week. We are preparing for the big day, which is Saturday. If you are just joining us, I love Halloween. And so the entire week before Halloween, we are doing cool makeup looks that are costume centered themed, whatever. Um, and I've got some really cool Halloween related or spooky stories, uh, history facts, things like that to talk about as well. So yesterday we did uh, just a really basic candy corn look. Today I'm wearing my pumpkin dress. We're gonna do a pumpkin look and it's gonna be like kind of a pumpkin skull hybrid thing. I think, I don't know, I haven't fully conceptualized it. And today's story um, is really, really freaking interesting. Um, I didn't know it until I started researching stuff and it just happened to, I stumbled upon it in my research and I was like, I wanna talk about that, it's perfect. I'm not really focused on like talking through the makeup or doing a tutorial type style. It's just kind of gonna be what I'm doing while I'm telling you guys these stories. But I did wanna say um, for today's look, I am going to try something that I've seen a lot of people do. I've never actually tried it. So I'm hoping it works out the way I want it to, um, but I want to, uh, for the, the pumpkin, the skeleton, uh, the skeleton pumpkin, this the spump the spump the skumpkin the pumple i want to uh to cover my eyebrows um and make it seem like i just have like a blank canvas so we're gonna use a glue stick technique i hope it works i also hope when i go to remove it i don't remove all my eyebrows but i have seen it seems to be a pretty tried and true technique in the beauty community when it comes to trying to make your eyebrows disappear so we're gonna i'm gonna do my damnedest uh, also, this is a very old glue stick and um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find one in our house or not. And then we were digging and I was like, aha, does this still work? It seems to be working pretty well. It's kind of working. It's kind of working. All right, well, that was a nightmare and uh, this is as good as it's getting and this one doesn't wanna be covered and I'm just gonna roll with it because I can't stress out about it anymore. So today's story centers in Ireland. Uh, the jack-o'-lantern as we know it actually started on turnips, which, Cool, I was like, I didn't know that, that's neat. So yeah, so we've got uh, turnips, which were the original canvas, and it's the highlight of this, this story here that I'm about to tell you guys. So there's a there's an old an old legend, a wives' tale, a fable, whatever you want to call it. It comes from um, the the same time as like you know Sam Hain and all of those were going on, and it was uh, as as most stories and fables are it was trying to inspire people to uh, to be a good person. It was saying, you know, don't, don't do shady stuff in your life because it'll come back to bite you. So today we're gonna hear about the story of Stingy Jack. And I will say, because this is a legend, I read a couple different versions of it. There's a couple different, you know, portrayals, but they all basically say the same thing. So in some areas I may say, you know, I read one account where it said this and one account where it said this, but it's all, I mean, you'll get the gist. That's what we're just, we're just trying to get. We're trying to get the gist of what people were telling about our good friend, Stingy Jack. And uh, by all accounts, Stingy Jack was just a real son of a bitch. <laughs> like, he just wasn't good. He was, uh, he was stingy, obviously, that's in the name. Uh, he was, he was very conniving. He manipulated people. He was always trying to pull one over. He would steal money. He was a drunk. He just was, Basically, he was trying to uh, to swindle anybody he could and whatever money he got from his swindling, he would immediately spend it at the pub. So he was a real mess of a human, just not anybody fun to be around. Also, my nose actually is kind of cool looking. I kind of like it. He's a real, he's a real mess of a human. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta figure out. I wanna make my eyes evil pumpkin shaped and most of the evil pumpkins, they kind of go like, kind of goes like, I think we're gonna do like a down and kind of like an up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. And if it sucks, then it, you know what? It sucks. So one day, Stingy Jack, he was at a bar, which is where he was normally found. So while he's at this bar, he's bragging. He's, he's talking big talk, lots of smack about all of the bad deeds that he's done in his life. Um, the swindling, the lying, he's bragging, just like, yeah, I don't care about being a good person. It doesn't matter to me. And who is in this bar? None other than Satan. So Satan overhears it and he's like, this guy sucks. I have to have his soul because he is a terrible person. And that is what I want to surround myself with in hell. So he starts uh, 
making his way over to uh, to Stingy Jack, and he's like, hey, Stingy Jack, I'm Satan, and I want your soul. And Stingy Jack's like, well, shit. He convinces Satan, says, well, all right, you have my soul. I get it, I'm not gonna be able to fight this. I'm not gonna be able to get away, I understand. Can I at least enjoy one final drink here in my favorite pub with you before we make our journey to hell? And Satan is kind of like, well, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a good dude, but I'm not a bad dude. So sure, let's have a drink, friend. So they sit and they have a drink. When it comes time to pay the tab, Stingy Jack, of course, doesn't have any money. And he's like, Satan, you gotta cover this. And Satan's like, I don't have any money. So they're like, well, what do we do? What are we gonna do, friends? Like, how are we gonna make this work? So he says, okay, he being Jack. Jack says, okay, all right, listen up. Listen up here, Satan. This is what our plan is. This is how we're gonna handle this situation. And I got real confused over this part. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so he says, Satan, turn yourself into a coin and I'll pay for our drinks using you and then we can leave and go on to hell. But how does that work? If Satan's the coin, then Satan's gonna stay at the bar, right? Like he'd be in the till. Like they'd be like, okay, thanks. Here, I took the money. I, I don't know. I don't, I was confused about this. Like was Satan gonna turn himself into a coin and get into the register and then just like wait until they weren't looking and leave? Cause couldn't they just like walk out on the bill? I'm just, con I was confused. I was just confused by that part. But I'm not, I'm not judging it. It's an old story, so you know. Who am I? So they, they decide this is the plan to do it. Well, now was this the plan that uh, that Stingy Jack had in his mind? No, it wasn't. This was a trick. Yeah, you guessed it. Stingy Jack, who was known for his trickery, is about to trick Satan. So Satan turns himself into a coin. He gets uh, placed inside of Jack's pocket. And he's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? It doesn't feel like a register. This feels like cloth. And uh, inside, inside Stingy Jack's pocket, he had a crucifix. And this more or less trapped Satan. So Satan was like, oh no, I done messed up. And he starts to beg. He's like, please let me out. Please, please, please. I don't want to be in here. I don't want to be in your pocket. It smells bad. I don't know if he said that or not, but I would imagine it probably smelled like a drunk person. So probably wasn't great. So yeah, so they start, uh, they start kind of negotiating. Jack's like, let me see how, what I can do here. Okay, just for time's sake, I went ahead and did the other one off camera. It's a good thing, because this one looks like shit. I don't, it's fine, it's fine. I don't hate the look, it just, it's just been stressful. It's str more stressful than I want to admit. Anyway, back to Jack. So Satan's in his pocket, and they start negotiating, and Satan is like, please let me out. And Jack says, okay, but on the deal that you will leave me alone. And this is this is one of those times where like we have different accounts, different uh, different things said for different uh, stories. So one said that it he asked to be left alone for a year. And one said that he asked to be left alone for 10 years. I know there's a lot of lore about like when you make a deal with the devil, you get like 10 years or whatever. I don't know which is true, it's all both. But he says, please leave me alone for a set amount of time. Let me not go to hell and I'll let you go. And Satan says, okay. So that's what they do. They they agree and Satan is released and he lets uh, Jack continue about his debauchery, undaunted by, uh, by the fact that he was almost t taken straight to hell uh, by Satan. And you would think like, maybe he might readjust. Nah, no, nope, nope, nope. Don't, don't, don't give him that kind of credit. Let me just say, just he's not, he, no. So, so Jack, uh, Jack goes back to living a life of just absolute shit. He continues to drink. He continues to to do his his mischievous things and and live a a, a life of of sin, awfulness. I don't really know what my plan is for the orange. If I'm being honest, I think I'm just gonna do it like all around the eyes. I'm gonna do black on the lips too. I'm just haven't gone there yet. I'm gonna do it on the eyes and around the nose, and then I think I'm actually gonna go in and like kind of contour with some like a different colored orange than this. This is kind of like a reddish orange. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do something to try and fix eventually this eye. Is this is the priority because he looks like a, a just a train wreck. But you know. Okay, so one year later, ten years later, whatever amount of time later. The deal is up and Satan no longer has to abide by the, you know, not messing with our friend Jack here any longer. He, 
conveniently stumbles into uh, Jack as he is walking home from the pub intoxicated because that's all Jack is, is intoxicated all the time. He says, Jack, Jack, our deal's up. You're still a shitty person. So let's go on off to hell. And Jack says, oh, man, all right, let's go off to hell. So he, got, he, goes with, he goes with Satan, they're walking. They're walking along, they're cruising. And uh, they, they pass an apple tree. Jack says, hey Satan. He says, hey Satan. And Satan says, what Jack? He says, you know, I'm about to go to hell and I'm gonna live a, a horrible eternity burning in hellfire. I'm gonna be miserable and I'm not gonna enjoy anything like I got to in life. Do you think you would be willing to let me get an apple and eat that apple on the way there? And Satan's kind of like, I feel like Satan. So two things about Satan, this is a tangent. This is my opinion. One, I feel like I, the whole time I'm reading this, like I'm like, I feel like Jack is this whiny, obnoxious two-year-old or a drunk person. If you like ever had to be the person taking care of a drunk person and Satan's just annoyed as shit. And he's just like, please, can I have an apple please? And Satan's like, fine. But also Satan's kind of dumb. Like I just have to point that. Like, he just doesn't come off. He doesn't come off looking like he's too intelligent here in this story. I'm not saying, I don't know Satan. I don't need him to come for me and be like, did you call me dumb in that YouTube video? I'll be like, well, I mean, I'm just saying you didn't make the best decisions here, Satan. I'm just saying maybe, you know, try and fix yourself. Anyway, so that's just that it, unnecessary information. Just my opinion on this. So yeah, so Satan said, sure, fine. And he goes, well, will you climb? Will you climb Satan? Will you climb up? And I'm too drunk. Will you climb and get me that apple? And he says, fine. So Satan goes up the tree. And Jack, while Satan's up the tree, while he's busy climbing away, Jack carves a cross into the bed of the tree. Well, guess what? Now our friend Satan is stuck for the second time because of Jack. Just saying, it doesn't seem like that's something an intelligent person would do, but whatever. You're supposed to be the king of conniving, but here we are stuck again from the same drunk idiot. So just saying. So yeah, so he's stuck in the tree and Jack is like, all right, here's the deal. I'll release you, but you can never take my soul to hell. No matter what I do, no matter how bad I am, no matter how many evil deeds I do in my life, I'm not gonna end up in hell. And Satan says, fine. He says, I don't really want you anymore anyway. You've been a real big pain in the ass. Fine, let's just go our separate ways. Live your life of debauchery and leave me the hell alone. And so Jack says, okay. So he releases Satan for the second time and they once again part ways and Jack continues to live out his life. Now he lives for a good while longer doesn't die immediately, but you know, everybody dies. It's not like he was gonna live forever. So he continues his life, doesn't change his path. Had two chances to, to, re to redirect and maybe try and, and get into heaven. Nope, not the choices he made. So, uh, so yeah, so he continues to live his life of debauchery. And uh, when he takes his final breath, he ends up at the gates of heaven. And St. Peter says, well, you are a terrible person. Like, why would we let you in here? So he can't get into heaven. And he goes to Satan because he doesn't know where else to go. And he says, Satan, can I please come in? And he said, nah, we got a deal. You can't come in here, sorry friend. And he's like, but I don't have anywhere else to go. And he's like, well, good luck to you. But because he's not totally horrible, Satan is not, he's kind of a, he's kind of a, he, he kind of feels bad for the dude, even though the dude sucks. He's like, well, here's a, here's a coal. Here's a, here's a burning ember from hell. Use this to light your way. So Jack leaves and he is a lost soul left to roam the earth. And he takes a turnip and he hollows it out and he puts the burning ember in it. And that is uh, is more or less how the Jack-o'-lantern started. People started to refer to him as uh, Jack of the Lantern, which then morphed into Jack-o'-lantern and that's how we know it now. Okay, so off camera I did my lips too.
I don't know. I don't know if I like it or hate it. I don't know. I have to see it from far away. From up close, I hate it. But it's not bad. But I don't love it. But anyway, that's not the point. So just to finish out this story, since we're done with Jack, we know he's roaming around. He's Jack, Jack of the Lantern. Jack of Lantern as he's known. Um, how did this translate into what we do today? So in Ireland, after the story uh, was, you know, circulated and people started to to be worried that he might show up at random times and and when i say random times really specifically halloween was when they were worried because of with sam hain if you guys uh didn't see that just to, to reiterate sam hain it was they thought that um spirits were able to kind of walk around on like november 1st halloween those it was the it was a, this kind of like loose the threshold where the, the veil was very, very weak. And so sometimes spirits could come back. And so because of that, people would dress up and they would um, they would try and trick the demons and the, the evil spirits into thinking that they were also spirits so that they wouldn't be messed with. Well, very similar to, to that idea, that's kind of how we see the jack-o'-lantern start. So people started to carve turnips themselves and they would put scary faces on it to try and scare Jack away to keep him from showing up at their door. And they would sit him on their porches and stuff like that. And in Ireland, it really was turnips and potatoes because that was kind of the crops that we that they had available to them. Um, so that's really what, what they used it, or what they used in order to uh, to make it work. Then it migrated over to, uh, to England. And in England, uh, people used large beets because that was something that was readily available to them. And then finally, when the tradition made its way into the United States, that is when we start to see the traditional pumpkin being used because pumpkins are native to uh, the United States. And it seemed to be a really good canvas for carving. So that's how we have now the tradition of the jack-o'-lantern. I thought it was a really cool story. I had heard absolutely nothing about it. I didn't even know that this was something that should be on my radar. And so when I was looking up Halloween traditions, I found, you know, the story. And so I started looking up the tales and reading different versions of the, the folklore and everything. And that's kind of where I saw, you know, like there's different dates and there's different things like that, but I really liked it. So I figured I, it would be a good one for the pumpkin to share with you guys. Uh, yeah. I think I'm done with the makeup. I'm gonna go double check it really quick in the mirror and just make sure that there's not like a couple touch up things that I wanna do. And then I think that's it for today. All right, I looked at it. I showed my mom, I showed my dad. I, Nikki thinks it's terrifying. I'm not gonna lie, I do really like it. It's, it's not exactly what I was picturing, but it worked. You know, that's kind of the whole vibe of my channel. So yeah, and my life and just all of me in general. I will say I'm pretty damn proud of the nose. The reason I wanted it to be like skeleton-ish is because I wanted to do this kind of a nose and I really like how the nose turned out. So like, I'm I'm pretty proud. I love, I love this part. Like, this is my favorite. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you did, we still have five more videos to come. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well because it definitely helps out our channel. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow for look number three in Halloween. I hope you guys are all safe, healthy, you have a wonderful day, and you stay girly with a dark twist.